In this video, we'll be reviewing question 8.3.22-T from the 8.3 MyLab homework, and it's reviewing hypothesis testing for a mean, mu. When we see this symbol here, kind of like a U with long tails, we call that mu. The question reads, Students estimated the length of one minute without reference to a watch or clock, and the times and seconds are listed below. There are 15 of them. Assume that a simple random sample has been selected. Use a 0 0.01 significance level to test the claim that these times are from a population with a mean equal to 60 seconds. Does it appear that the students are reasonably good at estimating one minute? And then we have 15 items of data here and we're asked to perform um, a null and alternative hypothesis test, assuming that the requirements are met. And then we are asked to identify the test statistic and p-value, and eventually we'll make a determination based on this information that we find. First, what we should do is determine some important information about this problem. I know, for example, that I am hypothesis testing for a mean and not a proportion because the problem um, talks about a mean equal to 60 seconds. So it's referring to the population mean being equal to 60 seconds. So I know that mu in this problem is 60. I know that I have a set of data and that set of data has n equals 15 items. I don't know my sample mean, I don't know my sample standard deviation, but I do have my data. So when I go to use my calculator later, I will be putting data into a list as the first thing that I do in order to use the calculator features. I know in this problem that the significance level that I'm testing against is 0 0.01. So alpha is the significance level, is 0 0.01. For my population, I do not know sigma. When sigma is unknown, I like to go ahead and write it at the top of my paper. That means I'm going to be doing a T test. Why? Because I do not know the population standard deviation. And in real life, that would be the more common thing to have to do a t-test than a z-test. So, but when I have to identify my test statistic below, I know it's going to be a t-test. So I'm just going to write t equals so I don't forget and do the wrong one by accident. So let's go ahead, now that we know what we know and things that we don't know, let's go ahead and determine our null and alternative hypotheses. Now, a null hypothesis is denoted by H naught, we say, or H sub zero. And it's for a mean, so it's always going to be mu if we're talking about a mean, and you'll have an equal to sign. Always, always, always on the null hypothesis, it's your um, equal to sign. The alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, has mu, but it'll have a not equal to, a greater than, or a less than sign. Now, we are asked, does it appear that the students are reasonably good at estimating one minute? Well, if they were good at estimating one minute, their mean would match the population mean. Our null hypothesis is going to be the mean is equal to 60 seconds, which is the population mean. Now, does it appear students are reasonably good at estimating one minute? Well, if they're reasonably good, it would match. So the alternative would be that it didn't match. So not 60 seconds. So we have our alternative hypothesis and our null hypothesis. Note, I put H sub A for alternative, but you might also see H sub 1 or H sub lowercase a. They all mean the same thing. Now we have to determine our test statistic T. Looking at our null and alternative hypotheses, I see that I'm testing a hypothesis for a mean, and since I have a not equal to sign here, when I get perform my hypothesis test, I'm going to have a two-tailed test. How do I know it's going to be a two-tailed test? 
because of that not equal to sign. I'm getting a test statistic centered around zero. So I have to find out what my test statistic T is. And I'm going to find out the P value. The P value represents that shaded area. So half of the shaded area, P value, divided by two is going to be one tail. And half of that shaded area is going to be in my other tail. So we have to find out what that shaded area is. And we're going to use our graphing calculator to do so. In your notes for this section and in the graphing packet you received at the beginning of the semester, there are instructions for how to perform a hypothesis test using your graphing calculator. So looking at the chart, which is also in your notes once again, I'm going to read down until I see hypothesis testing about a population mean. And there are two options. Now, I am going to do the one with sigma unknown and perform a t-test because we don't know sigma. And I'm going to follow these rules and use my calculator to do the hypothesis. I'm just going to show you first. We're going to go to stat over to calc and we're doing a t-test, which is option number two. Now, first it says input data or stats. When we look at our prompt, we already went over this, but we don't have all of our all of our summary statistics for the 15 items of data. So we're actually going to have to plug this data into our calculator. And I'll show you how to do that. Before we go any further, we have to go back to stats. And this time just go to edit, which is option one. And in your list one, if you have items in your list one, you'll highlight it and then press clear to empty the list. And then go ahead and type in all 15 pieces of data that you see in the question prompt. So you'll type in the number. So we'll type in 71, enter, 81, enter, until you have all 15 items. And make sure that first off you have all 15 once you're done there. And then um, make sure that you double check you have the right numbers because we wouldn't want to make a mistake with a typo. So take a moment to do that. Now that you have all 15 data items in, we can go ahead with our um, hypothesis test for a mean with sigma unknown. So we're going to go to stat, over to tests, and select item two, which is our t-test. Our input is data. We already have it in our list one. The mean given in the problem is 60 for population mean. I put my data in list one. If you put yours somewhere else, make sure you name some um, that list that you use. And remember to get a list, we press second. And then since it's list one, I'm going to press second one. We didn't use frequencies, so just leave that number alone. For this next part, always use the symbol that you see in your alternative hypothesis. Our alternative hypothesis has a not equal to sign. Next, we have color. That's just going to color your graph. And you can press either calculate or draw. I like to see the picture, so I'm going to press draw. And you can see here for my t-test, I have my test statistic t is 0.4325. Our problem asks us to round to two decimal places, so we'll put 0.43. And then our p-value is 0.672. The final piece of a puzzle with a hypothesis test is actually making your determination to reject or fail to reject and writing your conclusion. So we are asked to state the conclusion about the null hypothesis, as well as the final conclusion that addresses the original claim. Decide whether it appears that the students are reasonably good at estimating one minute. So in doing that, our first thing that we need to do is reject or fail to reject. It's not reject or accept, it's just reject or fail to reject. And the way that we do that is with our p-value test. So we say if p is low, null must go. Reject. If p is high, null will fly. And that's the case you fail to reject. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 
p-value and we're going to compare it to alpha. And if our p-value is less than alpha, that means it's low and we reject. If the p-value is greater than alpha, that means it'll fly. Visually, what do we have here though? We're going to reject if our p-value falls um, within the area, a smaller area than our alpha value. Let's go ahead and make that comparison. So our p-value is 0.672. Our alpha given in this problem is 0 0.01. That's our significance level we're testing against. I can say that our p-value is greater than our test statistic. So p is high, null will fly. So we're going to fail to reject. What does this all mean? In your notes for this section, I provided you with a flowchart and a graphic organizer for wording your conclusion or making sense of what you came up with in the problem. So we can follow this in order to answer the questions that we're trying to find in this problem. First, we start with, does the claim, original claim contain the addition of equality? Did our original claim contain equality? Well, we claim that students are reasonably good at estimating the length of a minute, so that would be a yes. Did we reject our null hypothesis? No, we failed to reject our null hypothesis. So we would say there is not sufficient evidence to warrant the rejection of the claim that students are reasonably good at estimating the length of one minute. Because the p-value was higher than the significance level alpha we were testing against, we are going to fail to reject our null hypothesis. There is not sufficient evidence at the 0 0.01 significance level to warrant the rejection of the claim that the times are from a population with a mean 60 equal to 60 seconds. On this basis, it appears that as a group, the students are reasonably good at estimating one minute. Where did I get this from? I followed the flow chart in order to get my wording for these problems. It can be tricky at first, but use the tools that you have in order to help you. That's all I've got for this problem. If you have any more questions, feel free to email me. Have a great day.